Some say they are really fun, and some say they are horrible, and some say they are grotesque, and some say some say they they are cartoonish. I hope it's all of it together. What I'm what I'm aiming for is is working in between, being being really funny, but also expressing expressing the horror within. Being being sort of all shallow and and and, and easygoing, cartoony, sim simple to understand, but on the other hand, very very deep and dark. That's that's kind of where I'm at. Not only with mask, with all with all the works I create, it's always um, the ambivalence. It's never just good or it's never just bad. It's it's always both at the same time. These are all unfinished. They're all. They're all hand knitted, and uh, at some point I was stuck and thought, I don't know how how to continue with them. So then I usually put them in a box and wait until until I have ideas, and then I go on. I think I start with this one, and this will be spray painted after. So what I do is I pull it over the head. Put in position, and then I can start working on it. When Dina's label sent me sent me her record and asked me if I wanted to do the, the the album cover for it, I was very pleased because it was the same thing. It was not good and not bad. It was um, very complex music, but also danceable and. I really felt like, oh, okay, that's um, that's someone who might understand why I make masks. That's someone who 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 understands the way I work. So I was, um, I immediately said yes, I I want to do it because I felt, yeah, let's say I felt understood by listening to to her music. Try this one. I have, have no idea. So with in, in this case, I start experimenting, and um, I would cover this in in thread, like completely. That's my idea for for it now. And let's see if that's any good. When I work the mask, it's really. It's really intuitive and it's not, I don't approach the mask or any of my artworks, I don't approach these things with um, with a certain concept in my head. I have maybe certain ideas I want to, I want to realize or I have um, maybe certain colors in mind and I really think then, okay, today I want to make something red and I really, I'm really interested in making it all red. But this, this is all, like the whole content um, I don't know about. I've really listened to my intuition making these things and it's it's really um, um, I try to to dig into what I don't know yet I try to dig into um, into a new world really into a new world of expression I also try to understand my my wants and my needs and what I what I what I want to create, I understand through creating. And what artworks I do, I understand through looking at my finished works. It's not that I have in mind that, okay, this is the type of work I do, and this is, this is what, I, what I want to achieve. It doesn't work. I've, I mean, I've tried that, and I'm frequently trying that. Every time I'm, I'm uncertain about, um, about anything, or I feel like, oh, I don't know if, if it's gonna be good enough, then I try to make a proper concept of how to, um, how to, to, to make the next mask, and what's, uh, what it needs to express, and what it doesn't. But it doesn't work for me. It never works. It has to be raw expression, and it has to be intuitive work. This wool is always involved, and it's always a hand knitted mask. And then I sort of embroider like I do now, or I embroider with beads. Or lately, I started, um, I restarted to use uh, materials I, I collect in the park. But it's like the basis is always is always hand knitted material. And then I, I kind of I treat the mask as if I would do an elaborate jumper. It's then really craft craft tools I apply to 
to to make these masks and that obviously has to do with with me being interested in fashion. My first mask ever I made after I had seen Eyes Wide Shut Kubrick's and there were these two people looking down from the balcony masked really slowly looking down on Tom Cruise. That was such a powerful moment I just thought this is what, I'm, what I want to do. I thought this is what I want to do and it turned out this is what I want to do in my life. And then I made the first mask which was a beak, a long beak made from paper mache. And then I started doing loads. I guess because I, I knew how to knit and it was an easy tool, for, an easy thing for me to, to, um, to knit a mask. I guess because of that. So it started very early on that, that the masks were, were knitted again. Some years I moved into um, only making art installations. And therefore, I started knitting huge meshes and stretched them in, in uh, stretched them in entire rooms. Some meshes, um, hand knitted meshes of something like eight by five meters and stuff like that. And at some point, the figure came back, came back in, and then I started to crawl under these mesh meshes, and um, they became my costume or they became my clothes. And then it was not a big step for, to to be back at masks again. I know all the crafts from my mom. My mom is sewing all her clothes and knitting was a thing um, I learned so early on. I think I was 12. I saw in one of her, she um, she got um, she got the catalogue from from Paris Fashion Week every um, every half year sent to our house. And I looked through the pages and sometimes I ripped some pages out and hang them on on the wall in my room and there was this one page which was it was Dior it was John Galliano at that time for Dior and it was a big white jumper um, with a sort of um, a knotted pattern and then loads of little bubbles um, balls like wool balls on top and I said to my mom I want to make this and she said well then you have to learn how to knit and we went to the next wool shop and I showed the woman the, the jumper and I said, I want, to, I want to make this, I want to learn how to knit. And she said, it's not possible. It's not possible, it's too difficult. If you can't knit, then you can't make it. And I thought, I can do that. And that became the very first jumper and I still have it. I changed it many, many times. It's even in London, it's even here. I changed it many times, it's now a cardigan, but it still has these little balls and it has this, this knotted pattern. That's how I learned knitting, because of John Galyanov um, making, making this, this crazy, jump, crazy good jumper. Um, yeah, and that was, I was about 12 years old. For Dina's mask, for the, for the album cover, it was nice because you could see through, you could see her face through the mask. You, you would know it's her on the cover. I used this, uh, I used this mohair as well because Dina wanted to to be on fire, to look as someone maybe burning, as, as if her face would be burning. So I did all, I did the, the mask for the, for the main album, I did, um, I did all in red and yellow and orange. For me it's, um, it's interesting to, to think about reduction of color in the process. I often experience that um, actually the less the less meticulous, the less exact I try to be, the better the outcome. The more expressive and the less in detail and thinking about mistakes and how does it have to look like, the better it looks because it's it's about this very raw and tough expression much more than about any concept and it's also exciting <clears throat> but it's also terrifying this looks great <laughs> see in these things for example I would um, I would not plan because I can't plan because yeah you just you can't plan these things they just happen yeah, I do worry, but I destroy masks all the time. It's all the time, like this one I did now. It's like, it's not looking good. But I don't, I do worry and I don't worry because I know that the process from thinking, okay, you've, you've lost it completely, you've destroyed it completely, 
two, this is the greatest mask I've ever done. That's just, that can be a moment, that can be one single, one little thing I hadn't thought about and then you're there and then the worst became, became the best and that happens all the time. Um, so yeah, I do worry about that, but I, uh, about uh, destroying a mask, but I do destroy them all the time. Maybe that's a good one. Also, maybe not. Maybe it just doesn't fit. It fits. I think that's gonna be a good one. With wool, I can create this this effect that it's still half see through. You you sort of covered and you're not. You're covered, but everybody can see you, um, or everybody can see you, but they can't really see your emotions. And I find this interesting. This uh, sort of um, space in between. That's why I'm why I'm explaining my work to people um, using words like transformation and metamorphosis and somebody becomes someone else or a human being becomes an animal a human being becomes a different character um, you're changing your identity and these kind of things I, I can achieve with the mask easily because you're visible and invisible at the same time <laughs> 